Hello, my name is Richard Chanick, and today's vignette will be Understanding CTDPAH and Overview. I'm at UCLA Medical Center, where I work in the pulmonary hypertension program. And these are my disclosures. This program is provided by North American Center for Continuing Medical Education, LLC, an HMP global company. And we're supported by an educational grant from McTellian and Rheumatology Consultant. So with this vignette, we're gonna outline the pathophysiology, the prevalence, and talk a little bit about the burden of connective tissue disease associated pulmonary arterial hypertension. Before we do that, I want you to understand a little bit about the basic physiology of pulmonary hypertension. As you may know, the pulmonary vasculature is a very low pressure, low resistance circuit. Because of that, the right ventricle really doesn't have to develop much strength. And also because of that, even a small increase in the afterload on the right ventricle can really impair its function. Interestingly, chronically, that's a different story. And so as the RV develops or hypertrophies in response to chronic elevation and pressure, it can handle very high pulmonary artery pressure. These two equations shown here, I think are important to know because it really shows how we think about resistance in the pulmonary vasculature as it relates to both pressure and flow. And when you may be familiar with the PVR equation, I think the rearranged equation on the bottom is even more useful in some ways because it tells us all the components of pulmonary artery pressure, the PVR, cardiac output, and wedge pressure. And as we work up a patient, let's say with connective tissue disease or PAH, we really think about this in sort of the hemodynamic sense. Does this patient have an elevated PA pressure due to a high PVR, a high cardiac output, or a high wedge pressure? And that's very important to make that distinction because our treatments are going to be very, very different. When we talk about the definition of pH, we do have some new recommendations in the recent couple of years ago now, Six World Symposium redefined the threshold for pulmonary hypertension as a mean pressure of at least 20 millimeters of mercury whereas previously it was 25 millimeters of mercury. To define PAH or pulmonary arterial hypertension, you also wanna see a wedge pressure less than 16 and a pulmonary vascular resistance calculated to greater than three wood units. To think about connective tissue disease pulmonary hypertension, of course, we have to put it in perspective of all the causes of pulmonary hypertension. And we clearly don't have time at this yet to go through all of these, but I think it's important that you recognize that pulmonary arterial hypertension or pulmonary hypertension needs to be classified correctly before one starts treating a patient. And if you see under group one or pulmonary arterial hypertension, connective tissue disease is listed there as an associated condition. But the workup of every patient with pulmonary hypertension, including those with connective tissue disease, really needs to include tests that look for left heart disease, lung disease, obstruction of the large pulmonary arteries or other mechanisms. And this is maybe even especially important in connective tissue disease patients because they can have many of these other conditions like restrictive left heart disease or pulmonary fibrosis. So I think this is a very useful system when we're thinking about patients with connective tissue. Now, I like to talk about the myths of connective tissue disease associated PAH. And those include that it's a rare thing, it almost never happens, that it's no big deal, it's not deadly, that it's really the rheumatologist that can send the patient away and don't have to deal with it, and that we really can't screen for it, and that it's not particularly treatable. Those are all myths, of course. And as I'll show you, PAH is actually quite common in patients with some connective tissue disease, and it's quite a severe prognostic marker and the rheumatologist who sees these patients all the time can make this diagnosis or at least screen for it. And there are screening tools. We have many treatments available for pulmonary arterial hypertension that are effective. So if you look at the likelihood that PAH is due to connective tissue disease, you can see here um, from these registry that uh, almost 25% of PAH is related to connective tissue disease, as you can see here in the overall population. And so 
if you think about associated conditions, it clearly is the most common one that we think about when we have a patient with pulmonary arterial hypertension. Now, one interesting question is it may be even more common than we thought now that we have this new definition. This is a pretty recent publication that looked at the prior definition, which was again, the pressure of at least 25 along with a new definition. And not to go through this in detail, but as you can see here, um, when they looked at the new definition, it really didn't amount for a lot more patients. So I think that the concern is, are we going to overdiagnose it very early on? I think it's probably not correct. So the new definition, I think, holds up for patients with connective tissue disease. Interesting recent reference. Although we talk about scleroderma, there are other connective tissue diseases, of course, like lupus, mixed connective tissue disease, and rheumatoid arthritis. And those, in fact, are also associated, maybe to a somewhat lesser degree, but associated with PAA. So any of your patients with connective tissue disease should be monitored for pulmonary arterial hypertension. What about the likelihood of death? Is this a deadly complication? Well, indeed it is. And in fact, if one looks at sort of the timeline, the causes of death in, for instance, scleroderma have evolved quite a bit. And again, busy slide, but what basically this is telling us is that compared to let's say the 70s where scleroderma renal crisis was by far the biggest cause of death, that's actually pretty well managed now, to a much better degree. And now patients die from pulmonary arterial hypertension and pulmonary fibrosis. So it's the lung involvement that drives mortality. Hence, very important to recognize these complications and hopefully treat them early. Now, when we look at survival in patients on treatment, you can see here that although we're doing pretty well, we still have a ways to go, especially with things like scleroderma, where you can see here that although patients are certainly doing better than they used to, um, we still have a ways to go to improve mortality in these patients. So I think what I can say in sort of conclusion is that connective tissue disease associated pulmonary arterial hypertension does occur. It's relatively common. You can do something about it by screening these patients. And in other vignettes, you'll hear about screening uh, tools for pulmonary arterial hypertension in these patients. That it now is probably the leading cause of death in patients, for instance, scleroderma. And because we now have treatments that you'll hear about in other vignettes, you need to look for it need to understand the burden that pulmonary hypertension has in patients with connective tissue disease. So I'd like to invite you to complete the post-activity questions to obtain your CE credits, and hopefully you'll join us for the next vignette of this series, which is screening mandates for CTD and hopefully improving PAH identification. Thank you.